Without doubt, nano hair strokes can be one of the hardest techniques to learn and master. So today I'm gonna to walk you through some shaded strokes on latex that you may find the easiest route into nano. So let's hit the latex. So actually I'm gonna draw some of my strokes. I've put the spine in first, um, and then I'm gonna start working from the spine and draw in my skeleton strokes. I, I, I still do this on people as well, but certainly on latex. You're gonna find it a lot easier to follow a line. Can you see as well that those strokes curve out? They're not heading downwards towards the bottom of the brow. They're more curved outwards. They're also gradually coming downwards towards the strokes at the front. I'm now gonna put some secondary branching strokes on. These strokes also come from the spine. So they're just gonna go from the spine and curve slightly more downwards. I'm actually using just an ordinary pencil here rather than a china marker because I find the china marker really hard to wipe off. And I'm just gonna put some V-shaped strokes at the front so they're nice and fluffy. Now I'm gonna to go to the top of the brow now and um, start putting some strokes in. And I still want those to go into the spine as well, apart from here, because we've gone past the spine. And if you look, those are slightly more curved. They're more like S-shaped strokes, but not too pronounced. And we're gonna move on to the machine now. Now we're gonna do shaded strokes. And so my machine is on quite a low setting. I think it's on at five volts. And as you can see, I'm gradually moving across the stroke. And I'm actually going over it a couple of times there. And the effect of this is going to be lots of dots leading into a really nice shaded line rather than an etched line or line pulling. So rather than a solid line, it's going to be really soft and powdery. So I'm going to do each stroke and also go along into the spine so that the spine is visible. Now, when you're starting these strokes, I'm going in soft so that the end of them is not abrupt. It is going to have a tapered feathery end. And again, going into the spine as well. If the ends of the stroke finish too abruptly, they don't look natural. So I want you to imagine sweeping in like um, a plane coming in to land, sweeping in to the stroke and sweeping out. You may find this easier on one brow rather than the other. So I'm just working on those initial strokes first. So the primary strokes, and then I'm gonna go and move on to the secondary ones. So these are the ones that we drew first. So I'll just get those in and the little feathery strokes at the beginning. So I want those V-shaped ones to go up into a nice point that tapers off as well. So we're now gonna start adding our secondary strokes in. So now I'm just going to work backwards ac across the design, getting the secondary stroke. So if you just look, I just taper inwards. Now you can either taper inwards or you can fluff it outwards, work in the opposite direction, just to make sure the end of that stroke is really nice and tapered and looks like a hair. So again, we'll go in and just shade along up the stroke and into the spine. Now, this is just our first pass. The needle that I'm using is a vertex needle and it's a 0 0.25, so it's gonna be really, really nice fine strokes. I also find that really easy to control. And also the vertex needle sucks up quite a lot of pigment, so you're not having to dip constantly. And also that allows me to do quite a lot of work at once. I also find it really easy to control the pigment with this kind of needle. So we're gonna go up to the top strokes now and start feathering those in. And if you look, they are slightly S-shaped and that movement stays multiple movements shading along. So it's just gonna be like lots and lots of little dots. You won't get as nice an effect if your machine is on too high. So you can see that that stroke just blends into that spine really, really nicely. We've got a beautiful flow. And I just want to make sure that each of the strokes is just above that outline then, just so that we get a really nice natural look. So we're just going to shave that down and then start on the connections as well to get all the connections in. Now you'll see that in this design, there isn't enough hair strokes going into the tail. So the tail goes on further than this. So we need to add a couple more little hair strokes in just to make sure that we get the right size brow. So I'm just gonna add a couple more little slightly S-shaped strokes to complete that design. 
This is our skeleton completed, so we're going to wipe this and then we're going to start to build up on it to make it look much more 3D and natural, so make sure you keep watching to the end. This video is brought to you by VIPMU, which is my very own mentorship program, where I and my incredible colleagues help you grow your skills in permanent makeup and push your business forward. We have multiple levels of membership, so hit the VIPMU link in the description so you can find out how to get me in your pocket. So we've given that a good clean there. I'm using 91% alcohol on a wipe there. Um, I actually want it to start taking off some of the pencil outline so that I can really see what my work looks like. And I'm really happy we've got a real clear outline of our design there, but it does look a little bit empty at the bottom. So I'm going to start putting some, um, some third strokes in as well. And also I'm going to go over our initial primary strokes and make them a little bit darker. This is going to make them look more 3D. So my second pass is going to concentrate more on the spine so as we go towards the spine i'm going to go darker so you can notice that i'm feathering towards the edge but then my strokes get a little bit slower on that spine because i really want to build up the color there so that we can give that more definition so definitely a lot more attention towards the center of the brow so we're just going to build that up so i'm focusing on those first strokes that we drew the primary strokes to just add some depth and definition to the design. You can see here that I'm going in a different direction as well. So if you want to feather out some of the strokes, you can do that. You can change direction. So here I'm going to branch out and start putting some um, third strokes in as well, just to fill that space. And I'm making these really feathery. So really, really um, pixelated, soft strokes. For our second pass on these um, higher strokes, I'm actually going to put some, um, darken the first ones that we did and then put some little feathery strokes in between. So you can see that when my hand slows down, I'm going to get more pigment going in. So that's going to look denser. So I'm going to fluff those secondary strokes out a little bit. So they're much more pixelated. So our primary strokes on the top, again, we're going to darken a little bit. And then we're just going to fill in any little gaps with some feathery strokes, much more uh, softer pixelated strokes. This adds a lot of texture to the, to the design. You'll see that in the finished result, that there's lots of texture. And you can see now it's starting to look a little bit more three-dimensional and it's more like hair as well. Quick clean so we can have a look, see how we're getting on. That's starting to look nicer. And you can see that that central section is a little bit bolder. That's looking really nice, but I still want to add a little bit more definition. So I'm just going to go and have a third pass, just going over some of those strokes that need a little bit more definition. And again, it's just that soft dragging of the needle that's pixelated, slow, and it's easy to follow. You may find this a lot easier than trying to etch or pull a line because it's easier to control the machine. It's easier to get those crisper, soft lines than the wobbly lines that you get by just trying to, to pull a line or etch. Because these strokes are softer though, we do have to go over them a bit. So you still need to be quite precise so that you're not getting blurry, uh, blocky lines. So as I want to add some more definition and some darkness on this central bit, we're going to have to make sure that we do hit the same line over and over. And I can give you some tips of how to train your hand to do this on the video that I'm going to recommend at the end of this one. So this kind of final pass is to just darken anything that needs it. So to just add some depth to, to the design and just to darken any of those strokes and build them up slowly. If there are any real obvious spaces, you can just put some little feathery strokes in as well. 
And to make them look textured, I'll usually do those at a faster pace so that they're much more pixelated and softer. Now I do want to blend those strokes together and not have too many harsh spaces in between so I do like to add a bit of shading but we have to be really careful because we're doing shaded strokes we don't want to overshade otherwise there's going to be no definition of what's a hair and what's shading. So I'll shade a little bit more towards the centre towards the spine and I'll just dot some shading in. And if you're scared of doing this if you don't want to uh, <laughs> risk over shading then turn your machine even further down turn it right down so that all you're getting is scattered dots rather than um, anything that's too close together that could um, mess up all this hard work that you've put into this design so now i've finished going over with the needle and just darkening any of those strokes and making them look bolder we'll just go over some of these front ones again make sure that they're nice and clear so we'll give that um, a spray and a wipe and then i'm going to go on to my final bit of shading where we just bring it all together so i will turn my machine down for this it'll probably be at something like a 4.5 really that slow all i want is scattered dots so once i've wiped just have a look at how carefully I shade this. So starting at the spine and shading outwards. Just really scattered pixels. So start in the centre and just work out slightly. So I might shade along the spine and then just in any of the spaces, but not too much. You can see each individual pixel there. So that's how little I'm going to shade. Just between the spaces. And what that'll do is just give it a little bit of background colour that's just going to tie everything together. It makes it look more natural. It just brings the whole design together. And because we've done such lovely shaded pixelated strokes, we won't need too much of that shading. It is already going to look really nice and soft. So finishing up on the tail there, just dotting in a little bit of colour. Just really, really light handed there, just um, scattering some dots all the way over. And then we'll give it a spray and a wipe and have a look at the finished result. So practice along with that shape and template as often as you can. If you're transitioning from microblading to nano, I also have some great tips to make that transition as easy as possible. So watch this video here and I'll see you next time.